In today's video is a back to basics topic by request. Uh, when working on circuits, whether it's something you've built and designed yourself, or maybe you're debugging or testing uh, some other circuit, uh, one of the very common measurements you might need to make is a peak-to-peak -peak voltage measurement using a scope. It's actually a very easy thing to do, but there are several little details that you do have to ensure you take care of in order to get accurate measurements. I'm going to use two different oscilloscopes to illustrate these points because some people have a uh, you know, basic digital scope in their lab and uh, many people will have a basic analog scope like this uh, TEC 465B. So uh, we'll make the measurements on both of those and talk about the things you need to be careful of. Now, of course the scope has to be properly triggered on the signal. Uh, you can't really make accurate measurements unless the, uh, the, sc the signal is stable on the screen. So get the uh, signal stable Adjust the horizontal time base or horizontal scale on the digital scope to ensure that you've captured all of the excursions of the signal. For example, if this time base was adjusted here, we would miss the negative peak. So if we slow the time base down, I can now see the peak-to-peak -peak variation of the signal. So get it triggering right and get enough in the time base to ensure you're seeing everything in the signal. So the next things to concern ourselves with are the vertical controls. and. Uh, uh, ideally for AC signals oftentimes you will use AC coupling because if we use DC coupling you know the signal uh, might be off screen if there's a DC bias on it like as it is on here and a peak to peak voltage measurement does not include the DC components so you could either use DC coupling and adjust the position down or simply go to AC coupling and keep it centered on screen to start with. Well, the next thing of course is to check the, uh, the bandwidth you're using uh, whether you're bandwidth limiting or not and uh, that will depend on the maximum frequency content of your signal. If you're looking at a high frequency signal, you want to be sure you don't have the bandwidth limit turned on on the vertical channel. So next let's look at the vertical scale. And there are several things to watch out for here. Especially in the analog scopes, they often had a vernier a variable vertical scale control. And you can adjust that and actually change the size of the signal. And what you're doing is changing the number of volts per division. So it's not going to be calibrated at the value shown on the pointer on the knob until that is rotated all the way to the calibrated position and the uncal light goes out. So ensure that you've got the vertical scale vernier control set into the calibrated position. Now the next thing you want to do is generally use the lowest voltage per division scale that you can use that still keeps the signal on screen. The larger you can make that signal on screen, the smaller the error will be because the amount of error in terms of you know, you're, you're interpreting that amplitude will be less with respect to that full scale amplitude. And now one of the most common errors is dealing with 10x probes. You know, it's, I highly recommend using 10x probes anytime that you're probing circuits until those special circumstances arise or 1x probes are valid. And uh, you can take a look at my video on 10x and 1x probes to get more detail on that. Now on scopes like this 465, they can actually auto sense whether you're plugging in a 10x probe or a 1x probe. And that's actually because some of these probes actually have a little pin. You can see that pin right here that connects up to this little ring on the uh, vertical input connector. And you'll notice that the vertical scale indicator changes when I plug this probe in. See how it moved over to the 10x position instead of the 1x position. So it automatically knew that I plugged in a 10x probe and properly indicates the vertical scale. If I had used, say, this probe here, this is also a 10x probe, this uh, uh, P2221, this does not have the indicator. If I plug this probe in, my indicator would still say 20 millivolts of division. I would have to mentally remember to multiply that by a factor of 10 in order to get the proper vertical scale. Okay, so with the uh, coupling done right, our vertical scale properly determined, the bandwidth set appropriately, uh, to make the peak-to-peak -peak measurement it's actually very simple. Uh, we can use the vertical position control to line up the bottom of the waveform with a major gradical and simply count the number of gradicals. In this case we've got one, two, three, four, just about exactly five vertical gradicals. So five gradicals times uh, 0.2 volts per division or per major gradical that gives me a one volt peak to peak signal. So that's how simple it is to make that measurement but you do have to ensure that you take care of these other details. 
Now on some scopes, there's another little bit of a twist. Let me take a look at the digital scope here and show you what I'm talking about. Now, of course, on the digital scopes, we've got to take care of the same details. Get the triggering set right so we've got a stable waveform. Get the horizontal time base or horizontal scale set appropriate so we can see you know, all of the highest positive and negative peaks or uh, peaks and valleys of the signal. And also get the uh, vertical settings set right. Now on this scope, the attenuation of the probe is not automatically sensed. Uh, there's no ring around the uh, input BNC connector. So even if this probe had a pin on it to tell it that it was a 10x probe, plugging it in would not cause the scope to change its vertical scale. So on these scopes, often in the vertical menu, there is a place for you to tell the scope what the probe attenuation is. And it's very important that you set that properly. In this case, I'm using a 10x probe, so I've set that to 10x. If you don't do that, your readings can be off, and this could be a very frustrating thing. It's a very common thing. So now, of course, once you've taken care of those details, uh, you've got some other tools at your disposal on these scopes that the, many of the analog scopes don't give you. Uh, you can use uh, cursors. Uh, I could bring up uh, some curs voltage cursors here and actually make the measurements just by moving cursors around. And of course that's a manual way of doing it, but you certainly can do that. And of course there's automatic measurements on most of the digital scopes to make the measurement for you automatically. But uh, you have to be careful, if you don't have the vertical scale set right, the measurement will lie to you as well. So this was just a, a simple short video to kind of talk about the little details that you've got to worry about when doing something as simple as making a peak-to-peak -peak voltage measurement on a scope. Thank you again for watching.